right. Hello. So happy to have you here. All right. Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about how to love our overthinking mind into a state where we can actually feel and where we can um, yeah, start to use some of these more uh, feeling emotional mastery tools that I talk about here um, when, again, we find that we are the type of person who has a lot of thoughts, who thinks about life a lot, who f finds it very difficult to actually practice feeling um, and to, to be in our feelings <laughs> and who just gets stuck in loops of thought and stuff like this. Okay, so the first thing that I want to say about this topic is that obviously I am not a mental health professional um, and I am not wanting to act as though I am a substitute for a therapist or working with someone uh, specifically one-on-one -on -one, and that hopefully everything that I give are just tools and supports and things to try on, especially like within therapy or outside of therapy or anything else that you're doing that resonates with you. Um, again, always, always, always defer to yourself, always defer to whoever you're working with, always defer to a professional if that is some, someone that you're working with or who knows your story or knows your situation over what I'm saying. And, and if anything that I'm saying doesn't feel good for you and it doesn't work for you, let it go, okay? That's always my caveat with that, is just like anything that I'm offering here is just something to try on, something to see if it works for you, and if it doesn't, let it go. Um, because again, this this is my, my big kind of position as a person who teaches self-love, is that I am a pragmatist, and I hope that everyone who's watching and who's that that we're pragmatists. We're we're not here to find the rules or the right thing or to find a protocol that we can follow and assume it is always right. We are here to figure out what actually works, what actually makes our lives better, what actually helps us feel better in this world, and and to release ourselves from any kind of um, shame or dogma or this is how it has to be all the time or this is how it is for every person because I feel like again this is the biggest freedom that we can actually find in ourselves is, is to just step back and with everything that we're using and everything that we're doing and everything that's suggested to us and everything that's offered to us to just ask ourselves does it work? <laughs> Does it actually enhance my life? Does it make things better or not? And and whoever it's off is offering, whatever they're offering, whoever is telling us that we should do this or that this is the way or whatever, whatever, we always want to go by results. We always want to go by how it's actually working in our actual lives. We always want to go with how we feel and how it is making us feel versus trying to force ourselves into a box or into rules or into a dogma or into this is how it has to be all the time. And second thing is that whatever is helpful for us and whatever we need to try and whatever it is that, that helps us to feel better and to live a life that feels better, if anyone is shaming you for that or if anyone is judging you for that or if anyone is criticizing you for that, again, I hope that this will be a, a space where we can come and say there there is no judgment and there's no dogma and there's no doing it right or doing it wrong. It's it's really this skill of learning to trust ourselves and learning to trust our experience and learning that that, that life just doesn't operate in a black and white and life doesn't operate in an always and never and life doesn't operate in this is how it is for everyone all the time and if you're not doing it like this and if you're not like this you're doing it wrong or you're failing. So this is the second thing that I wanted to say especially talking about something like overthinking and and obsessive thought. Um, so what I when I'm talking about when I'm talking about overthinking I'm talking about the like ruminating on your past over and over and over again or having hyper fixation on your current behavior and and wanting to do things perfectly and and feeling kind of like that decision fatigue all the time of like what should I be doing what's the right thing what's right what's wrong am I doing it right am I doing it wrong like oh my gosh and and constantly judging and questioning yourself um, the thinking of 
the future and constantly being worried about the future and trying to control the future and not feeling like you can ever feel safe or feel okay or feel secure because there's always a fear that's going on. And this kind of just, um, like I say, the, the, the point of analysis that leads to paralysis and analysis that leads to pain and because again, right, like thinking about your future and thinking about things and even to have anxiety about the future or to have regrets about the past or to wish that things had gone different or to ruminate on a decision that, that led to pain, I f that's a normal part of the human experience. We're all going to experience that at some point. However, there is a line between this is something that we can work with on our own, this is something that we can talk through, this is something we can think our way out of, this is something we can use holistic practices to help create something better for ourselves. There's a line between that and we need some extra help and we need some extra support. We need therapy, we need medication, we need, we need something to, because what we have going on just isn't something that we can manage on our own, just isn't something that we can manage naturally or without medication or without support of some, some kind. And so again, I hope that everybody feels safe here, that no matter what your experience is, that you cannot do it wrong and you cannot fail. Okay, so like if, if trying to manage obsessive thoughts or obsessive thinking and high anxiety or depression or any of these things in a way with working with your thoughts or working with journaling or working with your emotions and all of these things, working with your nervous system, if that doesn't help, if that doesn't help you to feel better, if, if these techniques don't work for you, it is not you that failed, ever, okay? And I really, really, really wanna make that clear. If the technique has failed you, the technique has failed you. You are not failing the technique. And I know, especially in the mental health world, and, and with people who are not as educated on mental health as, as some of us in the self-love space and, and all this are, there can be a, a huge rhetoric, a, a huge um, tendency towards you're just not trying hard enough you're just not doing it enough, you're not being disciplined, you're not focusing on the positive enough, you're, you're obsessing for no reason, you're, and, and like again, right, like this, this sense of like you're victimizing yourself or you're not trying hard enough or you're not doing it the way that you should be doing it and if you're not getting success, that this is some failing on your part, that this is some moral failing, that there's something like wrong with you and that is just what I wanna say, no. Like we are all different, we are all, we have all experienced different things on this earth. We've all had different traumas, we've all have different biochemistry, we all have different neurochemistry, and sometimes thought work and nervous system work and body work and emotion work and talk therapy is not enough. And that is not a failing on your part. So that is why, especially when I'm talking about something like this with like overthinking, I want to make it very clear that I am not saying that everyone who has obsessive thought or obsessive fear of the future or obsessive fear of, of re regret about the past or like that decision fatigue or obsessive compulsive um, tendencies that you should just use these mental tools and, and that should be fine. It's like, no, some people really do need medication. Some people really do need th therapy and one-on-one -on -one support. Some people really just have trauma or they have a different neurochemistry or they have something going on that this kind of work isn't going to be enough. It can be helpful. It can be something that we use in tandem with other things and that's great, but if this is not enough, if this does not get you out of the hole, if doing these kinds of exercises does not work for you, that is not your fault. You are not doing something wrong. You are not just not trying. And, and there are other modes of support and other modes of help that I hope that you would not feel shame in pursuing if you have the, the means to pursue them, okay? 
So that is my big thing here, is that this, this kind of work and these techniques that I'm going to talk about here are not going to work for everybody, and they're not going to be enough for everybody. And like I say, they may be used in tandem with therapy or in tandem with medication, or for some people it will be enough to, to do this on your own. And it's totally up to the results that you get, right? You have to be honest with yourself if these things are actually working for you or not, if they are enough for you or not. And, and I hope that we are moving towards a place where there is no shame in whatever it is that you're experiencing. Because again, we have to remember that, so this is kind of getting into my talk now, right? The, the overthinking and the, uh, the compulsive feeling like we're constantly projecting into the future and thinking about the future and wondering if what we're doing right now is going to get us where we want or constantly afraid of the choices that we're making now and what the consequences of them are going to be and we're constantly fearing the future and fearing what's going to happen and feeling kind of stagnated in our choices right now when we're constantly ruminating on the past and feeling like we made mistakes and we wish we had done things differently and we can't stop thinking about what we did and how bad we were and how wrong we were and how things could have been different and all of that stuff when we're in a place where we, we can't slow our minds down enough to feel our feelings and to actually just be in our body and be in our experience and we're like thinking about our feelings and we're thinking about our emotions and we're thinking about all these things all the time but we're not able to actually just feel. Again, sometimes that's because we're traumatized. Sometimes that's because of the things that we've experienced that were made us feel very, very unsafe and, and harmed us and hurt us and we need support in order to be able to deal with that and to find a way of finding some balance and some, some steadiness in our lives that isn't just working with our thoughts on our own, okay? So that's, that's what I really want to say, right? That our overthinking mind, when, whenever we're caught in overthinking, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not flawed, you're not broken, you're not obsessive, you're not, it's your brain and your body trying to protect you. That's always, always what it comes down to. It's that this hyperfixation on whatever it is you're fixated on, a hyperfixation on the future, hyperfixation on the past, not being able to feel, not being able to be in your body, all of these things are the mind-body adaptation to trying to keep you safe. So this is why I say, overall, we don't want to look at these parts of ourselves as bad and wrong and horrible and we have to get rid of them because they're awful and broken. That being said, if we're hyper anxious and we have all this anxiety about the future and, and our anxiety is trying to get us to do a hundred million different things all day to try to, it, that's not to say that we should just listen to that voice and that we should follow that voice all the way through because that voice is trying to help me and it's right and it's good in the sense that it is correct about what we need to do to be safe. It's just to say that that is not a bad part of you that needs to be gotten rid of. It's a part of you that is hurt. It's a part of you that is scared. It's a part of you that's trying to protect you and it needs support. So that's always where I'm coming from, from the self-love perspective, is that overthinking, overanalyzing, getting into these states where we're constantly projecting into the future or ruminating on the past or, or trying to, like I say, feel our feelings and feel our emotions and figure out what our intuition is trying to say, but we're not actually feeling, we're not actually able to be in the experience of that because we're thinking about it so much and we're constantly like, well, what does this mean and what does this mean? So if my, intu if my body did this when I thought this thought, does that mean this? And if my body does that when I think this thought, does that mean this? And if I have this emotion, what will I do this? Does that mean that it's wrong for me or that it's right for me? And we're just like constantly in this, this thinking, thinking, thinking. That, that again, that is you trying to protect yourself. That is you trying to give yourself pleasure and protect yourself from pain. So there's no bad part of you. It's not wrong and it's not bad. It's protective and it's needing support and it's needing love. Okay, so for the rest of this talk, I am wanting to address the people and the overthinking that can be supported with thought work and with feeling work and with nervous system work. Again, 
I am not saying that this works and this is all that anyone will ever need for everyone all the time because that's not true. Sometimes we need more help, sometimes we need medication, sometimes we need support, and there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with you, and if what I'm talking about here does not work for you, <laughs> the tools failed you, you did not fail the tools, always, okay. So, this is coming from someone who is a professional overthinker. <laughs> I have been someone with hyper-awareness, hyper and analysis um, my whole life and so the first thing that I also the second thing I guess now that I want to say about overthinking and over analyzing and and what does this mean and what does that mean and looking for patterns and looking for meaning and looking for answers all the time and also continually like trying to nitpick the future and trying to make the perfect decisions and do everything perfectly so that everything will come out perfect and trying to avoid or you know thinking about the past all over and over again and what did I do wrong and why did I do that and what was wrong with me that I did that coming to you from someone who's been that way my whole life again I believe that overthinking and over analyzing and being up in our heads all the time is comes with the package deal of just being awake and being aware and being someone who's alive in this world who's thinking about things. Because we live in a pretty overwhelming reality. We live in a pretty overwhelming world and there are just so many things that are happening all the time and we are bombarded with so much information all the time. And capitalism and the way that our economy works and the, the messages that we are sent all day every day about our worth and our value and what makes us good and what makes us bad and are we being accepted by the tribe and and even the the thought of like social media having expanded how many people are within our sphere of others and who we need to impress and who we need to in order to feel safe for that primitive part of our brain that feels like if we need if we're kicked out of the tribe we're going to die and all of this stuff like it's it's pretty overwhelming to be a human being so i just want to normalize and say that if you're someone who's chronically overthinking and who's got anxiety and who's got fears about the future and regrets about the past that again that's like not something wrong with you that's part and parcel of being alive and it makes a lot of sense based on what we're experiencing and then like I say all of us have our own traumas and our own things that we've been through and our own pain and suffering and, and things and chaos that we can't explain and then we're all going through a pandemic and then we're going through a recession and then we're doing all being an adult being alive it's pretty anxiety inducing so again <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you and if you're conscious in any way and I don't even mean that like spiritually I just mean like if you're paying attention to how the world is you're probably going to have some anxiety you're probably going to have some stress you're probably going to have some thinking and some overthinking and then the second thing is that we have been trained in this society from day one to not be in our bodies to not be feeling to not take our feelings into account to in fact usually reject our feelings, reject our bodies, to not be connected to our physical sensations, to not be connected to our emotions, to not be connected to how these things are speaking to us in ways that they may contradict the logic and contradict society and contradict what we're being told we all should be doing and should be being and, and what is right and what is wrong. And therefore, and then not to mention, <laughs> A lot of us have physical trauma, like we've, we're sick or we've had abuse or we've had just the experience of being in our physical body has not been a pleasant one. And so we have lots of reasons why we're ejected from our feelings and why we, we don't know how to be with our feelings and why we are afraid of our feelings and why emotional sensation, physical sensation, like the emotional sensation and the physical sensation that can come with our experiences that again contradict our logic, that contradict what we're supposed to be doing. They can be incredibly overwhelming and 
and scary and they have been pathologized and we have learned that we're not supposed to feel them and that we need to shove them away and again that if we listen to them and if we look at them that they're going to destroy our lives because they are telling us to do things and to be things and to say things and to not say things that are opposed to what we've been taught. So there is a very good reason why a lot of us don't know how to feel. We, we live in an intellectual world. We live in a world where we are trained to live from our neck up and that everything going on down here is just supposed to be doing something down here to make it look good, <laughs> right? Like, isn't that essentially the message of what we're supposed to do with our bodies in our society? Is we're supposed to fit them into a model so that we look good. That, that's essentially what we're trained to think of about our bodies and what we're trained to do with our bodies. So when our bodies have emotional sensation, when our bodies have emotional reaction, when our bodies have these physical feelings of this doesn't feel good or, or right, the butterflies in the stomach of anxiety, the tightness and contraction when something doesn't feel good, when we are repulsed by something that we're supposed to be attracted to, when we're attracted to something we're supposed to be repulsed by, when, when doing what we're supposed to be doing feels bad in our bodies, when doing what we're not supposed to be doing feels good in our bodies, this is all very confusing. This is it's going to activate our nervous systems and it's going to make us say, well, I can't do that. I can't trust my body. My body is steering me in the wrong direction. My body is telling me the wrong thing. This is, my body is getting in the way of my goals and my dreams and me doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And if I were to actually follow my body, it's wrong and it's bad and it'll take me off course. And all of these things. So to actually be someone who feels like not only like feels your feelings, but then gets to a place where you can listen to what your feelings are trying to tell you, it's not an easy task in our society. Because again, so much of what is normal and so much of what has been taught to us that we need to do to survive and to fit in and to be good hurts. And I will say this over and over and over again until the day that I die, <laughs> that the reason so many of us have coping mechanisms, we have things that we use to numb, we have things that we use to scapegoat, we have things that we do to self-sabotage, we have addiction, stimulants, all of these things, is because, is partly because being alive in our society requires that we are in physical pain and then we have to cope with that pain on some, in some way. We have to do things that hurt. We have to do things that don't feel good for us. We have to be engaged in relationships that don't feel good for us. We have to be in engaged in working environments that don't feel good for us. We have to do so many things biorhythmically that don't work with us. And not to mention, right, just like systemic inequality and lack of access and lack of resource and antagonism and just all of the things that we can experience because of society that do not feel good that again, now being asked to like be in your body and feel your feelings, number one, we're not going to want to do that. That's going to feel horrible. And number two, even if we do, now we're just feeling that everything hurts and that's going to be either very confusing because again, what are we supposed to do instead? How, if everything hurts and we take off all the numbing, we take away all the scapegoats and the, and the coping and the numbing and the self-sabotage, then we're just in pain. And then what are we supposed to do? Because to do something different, you're going to get rejected or abandoned or we don't even know what else there is to do. So to be in a place where we're in our heads all the time and we, we're not in our bodies and we don't know how to be in our bodies and we don't really even want to be in our bodies. And when we're trying to be in our bodies, it's hard. And trying to figure out what our emotions are telling us is hard. That's completely makes perfect sense because we are not taught to be in our bodies. We are taught to reject and abandon our bodies and our physical sensations and what does and doesn't feel good in order to fit into society, which generally doesn't feel good. Okay? So I just want to normalize that. That learning how to be in your body, learning how to feel your feelings, learning how to trust your feelings, it's not, it's not a panacea for life peace <laughs> because Again, so much of the time, what we feel 
And what we're going to discover when we're in our feelings and in our bodies is that we don't want to do normal. We don't want to do what everyone else is doing. We don't want to do what we're doing, that we're in situations that don't feel good for us. And then figuring out what to do instead, figuring out how to fix that, figuring out another solution, figuring out a different way, it's hard and it's scary and it's confusing. And on top of that, there's no such thing as perfect intuition. There's no such thing as just learning how to feel your sensations and then following your way into bliss. Like, it's hard either way. And I think that that's the other kind of thing that I want to say. It's that learning to feel your feelings and learning to trust what your body is telling you and learning to start to follow that as much as is possible for you is going to be hard and it's going to be scary and it's going to give certain benefits and there's going to be certain downsides. And then ignoring your body and staying in your head and following what kind of society is telling us to do is going to have pain, it's going to have pleasure, there's going to be benefits and there's going to be side effects. So, and, and none of us are ever going to be 100% one or 100% the other. We're all on a spectrum. None of us are completely following whatever we just want to do and like fuck, fuck everything and just following my body and my feelings. And none of us are just 100% turned off completely following anything and have no connection to ourselves. I think all of us are on a spectrum somewhere. Yeah? And like I say, the more we start to connect with our bodies and the more we start to connect with our feelings, the more we're going to notice that there's often this contradiction between what we think we should be feeling and what we think we should be experiencing and what we're being told is good and right and what we're actually experiencing, what we're actually feeling, the outcomes we're actually getting, and what feels good and right to us. And that contradiction is usually where we eject ourselves back into our thoughts because the, the contrast between what I should be doing and what I've been taught and my conditioning and what I'm actually feeling and what I'm experiencing is often so much cognitive dissonance and then the second thing to that is that oftentimes we feel this doesn't feel good, this does feel good, I do like that, I don't like that, I want to do this, I don't want to do that, but there isn't like a, and this is why, and here's the reason, right, this feels good because this, this feels bad because this, or this feels bad and this is what I should do instead, and there's this clarity that comes, that's usually not how it works. Most of the time, we tune into our feelings, we get a contradictory message, and we have no idea what to do with it. So we're thinking, 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 because what, what else are we supposed to do? We don't know what this message is trying to tell us. And even if we start to think about what the message might be trying to tell us, it can be very difficult to discern, okay, well, what the frick do I do with that? So again, <laughs> learning to feel our feelings, learning to actually feel instead of thinking about our feelings, is a huge skill in and of itself and it often requires that we let go of trying to figure out what everything means. And this is the hardest part, right? Because the, the point, usually for most of us, of why we're even doing our feeling work to begin with, why we're even trying to feel our bodies or trying to feel our intuition or trying to connect with our emotions and our bodies is because we want answers. We want to understand what is right for us, what is wrong for us. We want to tune into our intuition to give us guidance. Yes, we're not just trying to feel for the sake of feeling. Most of us don't just want to like be a good feeler. We want to be a good feeler so that we get answers, so that we get understanding, so that something can help us find this, the solutions that we're looking for. So to think, okay, so in order to get to a place where I can feel my feelings and get the message and understand what it's trying to say to me, I have to let go of the desire to get the information. And I have to just learn to feel. And if I never get anything from it, that's, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be like, well, I'm not going to do that. That's a waste of time. And also, my feelings are going to get in the way. Because when I'm feeling my feelings, it, they are going to contradict, likely, what I'm currently doing. They're going to contradict my 
conditioning. They're going to contradict what I've been told I should and should not be doing. And then when they're not giving me what I should be doing instead, when they're not giving me a clear answer on the path I should be on, when I'm not getting guidance from them, they're just hindering me. They're just making it worse. So what, why would I bother doing that? And what I want to say to that is absolutely that makes perfect sense that we would say that. It makes perfect sense that we would feel that way. And what I have to say is again, learning to discern what our feelings are actually telling us. Learning to discern what our emotions mean, <laughs> what our feelings mean, learning to have our bodies and our feelings as a source of information along with our intellect requires that we first go through a phase where we allow ourselves to feel and that we validate what we're feeling without understanding why. And I think this is one of the biggest blocks that almost all of us have, is that we want to know why. We want that answer. We want the feeling work to lead to answers and solutions and whys and what to do's immediately. And most of the time it just isn't. It isn't going to work that way. It's, it's not going to be that fast. We have to give ourselves time and space to, to process <laughs> and, to, and to feel. And then again, the, the second thing is that oftentimes what we are feeling is going to contradict our conditioning. And this is a really big deal <laughs> that so much of the time when we are feeling our feelings, they do not make sense to us. And so our brains are already going to be in that hyper-thinking state, in that hyper-rationalizing, analyzing state to try to protect us from the cognitive dissonance that comes with our feelings contradicting our, our model of reality right now. Okay, so again, we all have to understand that we all have conditioning, we all have a model of how reality works that we are working with. All of us have that. We all have a filter and we all have base fundamental assumptions about ourselves and about reality that we then use as a foundation to help us make our choices. That we use as a foundation for this is what is right, this is what is wrong, this is what is good, this is what is bad. And if we didn't have that, if we didn't have any filter, if we didn't have any like I say, lens through which we were viewing the world with some just fundamental assumptions, we would never be able to do anything. We would be completely lost in decision fatigue and there would be no way of filtering out information and deciding what information is relevant and what information isn't and how to make a choice and how to, we would be com like stuck in decision fatigue. So we are not here to try to get rid of all conditioning. We are not here to try to get rid of all base assumptions about reality. That is not possible. We are all always going to have a filter. And then again, we all have limited perspective on reality. And that is always going to be the reality. None of us are ever going to have an objective view of reality because that's impossible as a specific human being who has had a ex specific experience in a specific part of the world with a specific upbringing and a specific personality. We are never going to be fully objective. We are always going to have a perception. We are always going to have a filter. We are always going to have base assumptions that we're working with that help us make choices and help us make decisions. Okay, so we're not trying to get to objective reality viewing because that's not possible. What we do want to do is where there is pain and where there is suffering and where there is repetitive pain in our lives, we want to be able to crack through our perceptions that are incorrect, that are holding us in patterns that aren't working for us. Okay, so sometimes our view of reality, sometimes our base understanding, sometimes our fundamental understanding is true. As in like it really, and true in the sense that it works. It works in reality. It helps us get the results that we want. It helps us avoid the results that we don't want. And so relatively within the game and the sphere of reality, what we are believing works. 
it's fine. It doesn't cause us pain, it does cause us pleasure. So we go with that. And, and we don't question those beliefs until pain happens or until chaos happens or until harm happens, and then we start to question those beliefs. When we are in pain and when we are struggling and we we're, we're having these areas of contradiction and not knowing what to do and, and life is confusing, our base understandings of realities, our conditioning, is no longer working for us. It's not helping us to continue to make progress. It's not helping us to procure pleasure and avoid pain. That's when we want to start to question our beliefs. We want to question our foundational understandings, our conditioning. And the way that we do that, the most direct way that we do that, because again, the intellect can make sense of anything. And this is what we really have to understand about ourselves, is that our minds can make anything make sense it can make it a rule and then it will start to sort information based on that rule in order to fit what we already believe. That's called cognitive bias. And we all have that. We all have our, this is what I believe reality is. And then any information that I take in, if I'm not actively trying to allow what contradicts my belief system to contradict my belief system and therefore make me question my belief system, if we're not consciously doing that most of the time, our brains are then saying, okay, anything that comes in that contradicts my base understanding of how reality works is wrong. <laughs> anything that comes in and contradicts it, I will figure out a way for why it's wrong and how it's wrong and how to disprove it and how to get rid of it. No matter how much evidence in reality there is to support this new way, my, our minds can come up with a way of disproving it. And then same thing with anything that we believe. That if we really believe this, and if we really think this is how our reality is, we are going to search for all the evidence that proves that this thing is right. And we're going to enhance that, and we're going to blow it up. And we're going to, our minds are literally going to be filtering, 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 and saying, see, this is what you believe, so all of the evidence that proves that, I have blown it up in your mind, and I have filtered anything out that doesn't make that make sense. And that's why, again, like when we have like a, a negative belief about ourselves, when we were taught to hate or shame or blame a part of ourselves, we are all going to then have all of these examples in our minds of how that is absolutely true. Right? When people rejected us, when if we were that kind, if we expressed that part of ourselves, the negative things that happened, the ways that people didn't like it, the, the harmful consequences, and any amount of someone loving that part of ourselves, or there being some good in it, or other people believing that that kind of way of being is fine and good and right, we're not going to remember any of that stuff. We're going to diminish it, we're going to come up with a reason why it's not real and we're going to overinflate all of the stuff that supports that negative belief. And, and therefore, we are going to continually believe that what we believe is true because that is what our mind is designed to do. It's designed to help us feel like we know what's going on and then make our choices based on that. Okay? So this is why trying to combat our conditioning with just our thoughts is almost impossible because the mind can make sense of anything. The mind can determine that this is a rule and then once that is in place, it will filter, 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 filter to continue to reinforce what you already believe and to get rid of anything that contradicts it. Does that make sense? That's what our minds do. The, the mind is the manager. It says, okay, this is the rule, this is the law, this is how it is. And so I will figure out how that is true, and I will organize our lives around that. Our feelings and our bodies and our emotions and our outcomes, those are the things that cannot be fooled into something. Okay, so now again, this is a little bit tricky, okay? Because when we have a thought, like a painful thought, uh, a thought like, I am a piece of shit and no one loves me, a lot of the time, we will say, how does that thought feel? And, and the response that I will get is, it feels true. It feels true. It feels like, yep, that's true. And when I say, okay, so what do you mean by it feels true? 
usually what people say mean is that it feels familiar. It feels like a thought I've thought over and over and over again. It feels like something that I have gathered all the evidence for why it is true. And I, I can give you all the examples for why it is true. And I've gotten rid of all the evidence or diminished all the evidence that says that it isn't true. Okay? A lot of the time, when some thought feels terrible, because then again, I would say, okay, but when you say it feels true, can you describe the actual feeling in your body? What does it actually feel like to think the thought, I'm a piece of shit and no one likes me? Does it feel expanding? Does it feel light? Does it feel, like I say, expansive, light, buzzing, electricity? Or does it feel like heavy and dense and contracting and, and painful? The answer I always get is that it feels painful. Okay? But we have learned, again, to associate that painful feeling with truth. Our mind has made that the rule. Because if the thought is true, I'm a piece of shit and no one loves me, I've decided that that is true, then the feeling that I have when I think that thought is also the feeling that determines whether something is true. Do you see what I'm saying? So we can think this feeling of tightness in my gut, like someone punched me in the gut, like this heaviness, this, that's how I know something is true. I'm feeling my feelings and it feels true because I know that that thought is true and therefore if the feeling that I have associated with it is this, this must be the feeling of truth. Do you see what I'm saying? So we can be wrong about what our feelings mean. And therefore, so when I say that your feelings can't be wrong, I mean that your feelings can't be wrong. I don't mean that how you have interpreted your feelings can't be wrong. Because most of the time, how we interpret our feelings is incorrect. We have learned that when something feels terrible, that is true. <laughs> that the worse something feels, the more true that it is. We have learned that when something feels good to us, we should run away from it. That when something feels light and exciting and joyful, that we should turn that into a career. That's the first thing that we've learned, right? If we like something, if something feels good, monetize it. <laughs> That's what that feeling means. That's my new passion. That's my new thing that I should be making money on. But seriously, we have all been trained again that our bad feelings mean something is very true. So then when we start to get into questioning our painful beliefs, we start to get into this, okay, I'm feeling like I'm not worthy of love and, or I'm feeling like I've made a huge mistake. I feel like what I did in my past was a huge mistake and when I think about it, it feels horrible. It feels contracting, it feels all these things and that means I suck. That means I made a mistake. That means I should have done something different. That means I failed. That means no one's going to love me. That means I'm irredeemable. We have all of these associations with our feelings that oftentimes are not true. So then again, we try and do our feeling work. It's like, okay, I'm overthinking, I'm overthinking, so let's just, let's just feel what I feel when I think about the past thing that I did. Or let's feel what I feel about the future and the choices I'm about to make. And everything feels heavy and everything feels contracting and everything feels negative. And then we assume that that means I made a huge mistake, I'm never going to be happy, none of these options are the right option, I'm out of control, all of these things. Because again, this is what we have associated these feelings with based on what we already believe. Because we already believe I made a huge mistake and I'm a failure. We already believe I'm not safe and I can't have the future that I want. We already believe I don't know what to do. I don't know what the right option is. All of these things seem like they could be good or all of them seem like they could be bad. Or like I say, we try to tune into our intuition. We try to tune into our feelings when we ask ourselves, when we think a thought, and we have all of these different feelings. And it's not just one feeling that comes up, but we feel like seven different feelings. And then we're like, well, which feeling is the right feeling? Which feeling is my intuition? And which feeling is my trauma? And which feeling is this? And which feeling is that? And that's why the first task in this learning how to feel our feelings thing isn't going to be figuring it out. It's not going to be getting the answer. 
It's not going to be knowing what to do or anything like this. The first step in learning to feel our feelings is going to be, and if you've been around here for a while, you'll know what I'm about to say, compassion and curiosity. We have to develop the capacity to be kind to ourselves and to assume innocence and goodness with ourselves before any of this is going to make sense. Right? Because if we're operating from the fundamental assumption that we are shitty or that we've made bad choices or that we are irredeemable or that we are wrong and bad and flawed on some level, that there is something wrong with us, that's already going to be mucking up the works because you're going to feel something when you think those thoughts. I'm broken. There's something wrong with me. I don't know what to do. I can't trust my feelings. I don't know what my feelings are trying to tell me. I made a huge mistake. I'm bad. I'm wrong. I'm terrible. If that's the foundational thought that we're thinking, if that's the foundational belief that we have, we're going to be having an emotional reaction to that. And that emotional reaction is going to be heavy and dark and contracting because it's not true. And then when we try to contradict that thought, when we try to think something like, I'm good enough, I'm not broken, there's goodness in me, I can figure this out, I'm an adult, I can deal with this, any of these kind of more empowering thoughts, there's going to be a part of us that feels good about that. There's going to be a part of us that has that light, expansive feeling. And then there's going to be the conditioned part of ourselves that wants to shut that down. <laughs> that says, no, that is not true, that is not right, no, nope, no, nope, fear. Because again, what would that do? If you were to believe those good things about yourself, if you were to start living your life in alignment with that, it's going to start to contradict your foundational understanding of how the world works, how you have been making your choices, what is and isn't right, good, and what isn't good. And that's going to feel uncertain, and your nervous system is going to want to snap you back into what you've always been doing. Because remember, as painful as whatever you're in is right now, as painful as your painful beliefs might be right now, they are what is safety to your nervous system. Because it is what is familiar and it is what is comfortable and it is how you have been living your life up till now. And so changing that, no matter how liberating and freeing and totally awesome it might be, is change. It's different. It's unknown. And that always to our nervous systems is going to be a threat. And we have to understand that. That when we are trying to con combat our conditioning, when we are trying to say, okay, what are my feelings actually telling me? Where is the, the hint of lightness? Where is the hint of expans expansiveness? Where are the, th the thoughts that lead me in a, in a good feeling direction? We're always going to have that like snapback effect, that contracting, that don't go there, and, and where the mind is going to come up with all the reasons why that's not true and that's not real and you can't follow that. And if you were, you're going to ruin your life and everyone's going to hate you and all that stuff. Because look at all these examples of how that is true in the past and all these things that happened. Because your mind is trying to keep you safe. It's trying to keep you exactly where you are, exactly how you are, living your life how you're living it. Because that's how you've been making your choices. That's your foundation. So when we start to question our conditioning, when we start to actually listen to our feelings that contradict our conditioning, that contradict what we've been told is right and wrong, that contradict all the evidence we have collected in our heads for how reality is, that's not going to feel good at first. It's probably never going to feel good at first, like when we first discover that. That's always going to be like, well, holy shit, what the fuck do I do with that? If that's true, then I'm wrong about reality. If that's true, then I don't know what to do. If that's true, it changes everything. You see? And then the last thing that I really want to say is that usually the thing that's preventing us from even feeling our feelings is that right there. Is that our feelings contradict what we've been told and what we've been taught and we don't even know how to, we don't know how to validate that. We don't know how to just have a feeling and have it contradict what we think we should be feeling and not make it something wrong with us. So if you're an overthinker type, if you're the kind of person who doesn't 
who has, has trouble fi- feeling, being in your feelings, who you're constantly in your thought, what does this mean, what does this mean, what does this mean, what's the future, what's the past, what's right, what's wrong, you're thinking, 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 and you're, you're constantly in that thought, 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 we have to step back and just say, okay, I'm going to start to let myself feel without making myself wrong. And I'm going to challenge you to look at where you feel your feelings and immediately make yourself wrong. And immediately question, okay, well, well but what does that mean? Because we're either going to do two of those things. When we're, when we're uncomfortable with feeling and we're overthinkers, we're always going to go into self-blame and shame or we're going to go into, well, what does it mean and what's the answer? And we're going to toggle between these two things. And that's why I say step one is compassion. You are feeling what you're feeling. You're feeling it. You're feeling it where you're feeling it in your body. It's a sensation. And we have to have compassion for you that you are feeling it. Learning how to validate our feelings before we understand what they mean and learning how to validate our feelings without turning them into a, this means I should feel shame, this means I should feel guilt, these feelings are telling me that I'm wrong and bad, there's something wrong with me. Learning to do that is the first step in becoming someone who can get the information from our feelings. We have to learn to be able to feel what we're feeling, let it contradict a bunch of stuff, let it be confusing, and not make it a weapon that we are using against ourselves. So, the practical implication of everything that I'm talking about here. Make it a habit to every single day. If you do not have trauma, if you are the kind of person who can get into your body, who can do this practice and harness this practice, because not all of us are going to be able to. But if you are the kind of person who does have the capacity, set aside five or 10 minutes every single day to come into your body. So what I mean by that is to literally sit down, lay down, close your eyes, do a body scan. So feel your toes, feel your feet, feel your ankles, feel your calves, feel your knees, Do a scan all the way up. Notice one part of your body that had a particular sensation that you noticed or was particularly lack of sensation because feeling work, numbness is a feeling. I don't feel anything, there's, it's off, it's dead, dead zone, that is a feeling. And some of us don't have feelings, like buzzing and all these things. We have numbness and numbness is a feeling. So choose one area of your body where there was either marked sensation or marked lack of sensation and focus on sensation words. So instead of trying to figure out what the emotion is or what it means or what it's trying to tell you, just focus on sensation. So buzzing, tingling, light, heavy, shooting, numb. Just notice the sensation and then validate that sensation. That sensation is right. That sensation is good. There is nothing wrong with me. Just that, compassion, okay? That's where we wanna start. Feeling our bodies, feeling the sensation, validating the sensation. And I know that sounds really primitive and I I know that sounds like that's not gonna help me stop overthinking. (laughs) And you're right, it's not gonna help you stop overthinking immediately. But when, when we're thinking about overthinking in the context of trying to learn to feel, we need to use our brains for good. So focus on the body scan, focus on the feeling. Focus on what does the feeling feel like, where do you feel it, what does it feel like, and then validate that feeling. And then as you get good at that, you can start to validate your other feelings. Just validate what you're feeling. I'm feeling heavy. I'm feeling light. I'm feeling contracted. I'm feeling repulsed. I'm feeling drawn in. Just tuning in with what you're feeling and validating. 
validating that that's how you feel. And then, like I say, starting to notice where you want to reject yourself, where you want to abandon yourself, where you want to shame yourself, where you want to understand the feeling, where you want 10 steps ahead, and loving that part of you that wants to do that. <laughs> just loving and loving and loving that part. It's just trying to keep you safe. There's nothing wrong with it. But that's not what we're doing right now. So you love that part, and then again, you just validate the feeling. And once you get good at learning how to validate yourself, learning how to feel without abandoning yourself, learning how to feel without needing to understand it, then you can get into the curiosity part. Then you can start to say, okay, if something really feels like shit like this, it means it's not true. And like that, again, that's a huge step forward. To be able to say, if something feels terrible in my body, it means it's not true. Now, this doesn't always mean that the opposite is true. This doesn't mean that everything about it is untrue. Like if, if we think the thought, someone that I, I love recently passed away and that doesn't feel good, it doesn't mean the person didn't actually pass away, right? <laughs> it means that we have some grief to process. Because here's the other thing about our emotions. Not every emotion has a message or a guidance for us. Not every feeling means something. Sometimes we just feel. <laughs> and I think that this is another big thing about learning to not be an overthinker about feelings is to, un is to almost go in with the assumption that the feeling doesn't mean anything. <laughs> in the sense that it's not a message, it's not, it's not trying to tell us to do something different. It's part of the emotional process of being alive. So again, we start to practice just validating our sadness validating our grief, validating that we're upset about something, and noticing again from there that when we're overthinking and hyperanalyzing, what's really under that is usually a feeling we don't know how to feel. We're afraid, we're angry, we're sad, we're trying to prevent something from happening that we were upset about, like we haven't properly grieved what we went through, we haven't properly grieved the pain that happened that caused us to have all the anxiety. You see what I'm saying? We haven't processed what we've been through and our mind is trying now to protect us and get out ahead of it. So sometimes the thing is just to feel, to let ourselves cry, to like get a therapist or a journal or someone to talk to so we can process out what happened, process out what we're afraid might happen process out what we would do if that thing happened. Process out, are we angry at someone else? Are we angry at our caregivers? Are we sad or have we been disappointed? And we don't know how to process that and we're turning it in on ourselves. You see, a lot of the time the overthinking and not being able to feel is because we don't know how to feel our feelings. We don't know how to just process what we've been through and then move on because we've been told we're not supposed to. Don't be sad, don't be negative, don't be depressed, don't be any of these things, and that's not healthy. Sometimes we just need to feel what we've felt. We need to feel what we've been through. And until we let ourselves feel it, we're gonna get stuck in thought loops. And then again, once we've let ourselves just feel, once we've validated our feelings, then we can start to say, okay, does this co contradict my conditioning? Does this contradict what I think reality is? Is my body telling me that reality is a way that my mind doesn't agree with right now? And then we can start to get those messages. Yeah? But we first have to learn to validate. We first have to learn to feel and process. And a lot of the time, it's just, we just need to feel. And we need to cry, and we need to be angry, and we need to rant and rave, and we need to hit a pillow. We need to express what we've been through. We need to process what we've been through emotionally, through our bodies, nervous system work, dance, yoga, all of these things, and then it will move through, and then we won't have so much anxiety. Okay, and I'm not talking about anxiety disorders, I'm not talking about depression disorders, I'm talking about these things that we can process and work through. So, that's my spiel on how to love our overthinking mind into safety, is to recognize that that overthinking is trying to protect you. Love, love, love that part of yourself. It's nothing wrong with you. The anxiety is not broken and it's not bad. 
and it's not wrong with you. Now, what does it need? What do you need to be supported within that? What do you need to be supported within learning to feel, learning to have your emotions, and then, again, right, learning to feel and have your emotions doesn't mean we act on our emotions all the time, what we think our emotions are telling us. We learn how to feel. We learn how to just be with the feeling, be with the sensation, let it ride through, have the emotional expression, and then on the other side, see if there's something we want to do about it, something we want to see about it, if there's more information there. But again, in order to get to that information, the first step is to validate and to feel it. And that's not thinking. <laughs> so learning how to control the mind, how to direct the mind into feeling, direct the mind into validation, compassion, curiosity. What does it feel like? Where do I feel it? What do I want to express? Compassion and curiosity. There's nothing wrong with me. That's how we'll become emotionally intelligent. Okay? So that's my spiel on that. I hope that was helpful. Learning to feel means you got to learn to feel. <laughs> you got to practice feeling what it feels like. You got to practice not getting a message, not knowing what it means, just processing your emotions, feeling it, letting them move through your body. That's how we become emotionally intelligent. And so when we notice ourselves, Thinking, 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 thinking. That's when we need to just take a break, get into our bodies, feel for a while, make it a practice. See what happens when you practice it over time. You'll start to get messages over time. Not immediately, not right now. Okay, so we let that go. We learn to just feel because a lot of the time our emotions don't have a message for us. It's just something we gotta process through. And then when the message is there, we've set the foundations of compassion and curiosity that if there is a message, we can get it and we can let it rock our foundations and contradict our conditioning and all these things. Okay? So that's that. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful. I hope you feel like whatever you need for your particular situation is completely valid. There's absolutely nothing wrong with therapy or medication or any kind of support that you need. You are awesome. If the tool doesn't work for you, the tool failed you, you did not fail the tool, always, always, always err on the side of trusting yourself and getting the support you need. And I hope that this at least is a safe place where whatever you're using to help yourself feel better, you are not shamed for it. Okay? Okay. Have a great week. Have a great day, night, whatever it is. And I will see you next week with another video.